Yo, morning. So, this is day two. Day two, which should have been just day one. So, I'm now to come in to do the final connections for the armoured, going into that DB um, for the barns. Now, yesterday, if you saw the previous video, I'll put the link above my head somewhere, uh, I may have drilled through the water mains. Oh, what an absolute nightmare. So, what I'm going to do right now, so we're going to get this powered up into here. There is some future plans, I will tell you that, um, a little bit later on in the video. The future plans for this area. So, if you're new to the video and you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you do. Link is in one of the corners. Turn your notifications on and we can all be friends. We can all, all be friends. So, let's get stuck into the video. So we're at this stage now, we've got the two armoureds coming through. So we've got a 16mm and a 10mm. 16mm is to the big barn, 10mm is to the triple garages. And we've now got to get into here. So we're going to open this up, open this board up. I've not put this on. There's also a breaker that I noticed here, the second floor lighting, uh, which actually ran by a 16, 16 amps. So we're going to change that as well. Old hot tub supply. I don't know what's going on with that. I think that's gone. So we're going to be putting two new RCBOs in here that will take care of those and then we'll go through the testing procedure together as well a bit later on. Right, let's get that cover off. I've seen a lot worse as you can imagine. Um, shoes to little bits, there's exposed copper on there. So they need to be sorted really because that's not good enough. But I could probably guarantee what's happened is these cut those and then bent it round and not trimmed it again. So I'll bet you that's what that problem is. So got quite a bit of copper on show up there. Not quite terminated correctly, but there's a lot worse, let's be honest. There is a hell of a lot worse that goes on. The other thing is that there is obviously holes. Look, there's my fingers in there, look. That's not good enough. Um, but yeah, there's quite a few bits and bobs like that that need sorting, but yeah, I mean, there's a lot worse out there, isn't there? So we've isolated all the power off. What we're gonna do now is start looking at getting that up and dressed in into the bottom. And we'll get the we'll get it across here. These two RCBOs in, we'll switch this one out. Um, so let's go outside in the garage and go and get those. Right, here we go. Sorted. I've replaced the RCBO, so I've got a new one, new ones in. I've changed that 16 over for a six. Um, so we're now looking at trying to get these in. Now, speaking to the client, there is some massive plans going on. And I won't like I say at the end of the video, I'll go through them. Um, but what I'm gonna try and do is try and keep them tight as I can to this side. And then I think what we'll have to do is sort of when we get to around about here, sort of kick out like this and bring them up. Um but within reason, I don't want them too far out because of boxing in. Like I don't want them too far out, so I'll probably end up bringing them somewhere around about here-ish. Um, I don't want them too far because boxing in, you know, potentially at a later date and all the rest of it. So, um, so yeah. So what I'm going to do now is going to get these cleated up. Tools you're going to need for that, for obvious reasons, you're going to need an SDS screw gun, cleats for the two different sizes: one for 16 mil, one for 10 mil. Um, so Fisher, in fairness, these are my go-to plugs and screws. So we've got these are the Duo range, uh, Duo powers. They're absolutely brilliant plugs. They are really, really good. Hot, like it's that classic thing. You pay for what you get. It, it is really, it's one of those things. Uh, and then the, the Fishers have got Powerfast twos. They are, um, and they highly rate them. In fairness, I do highly rate them. And then we're going to need our actual gland for for terminating. So it's a 25 mil. So the knockouts you may notice on the bottom of here are all 20 mil. So we'll have to drill a new 25 mil hole uh, on here because if you don't, it's not gonna fit. And then that'd be stupid, wouldn't it? So don't forget, we're gonna have to do the flying leads and I'll, like to say, I'll show you all of those as well. Right then, girls and boys. So we've bent the um, armoured over, cleated it in. So we've cleated that all the way across. Tried to keep it nice and tight, but it's this stage here where I've got to make the decisions. So do I do my 10 mil and sweep it out up here or do I bring it in tight? So I think, I think it would look better like that, but then 
boxing in and all the rest of it in the future tighter. So I don't know. It's a tough one, isn't it? It's what to do. So I think personally, I think we're going to end up. I'm going to bring it in here. I think that's going to be the best course of action. Bring it in, keep it tight, and then the boxing in can be to a minimum. And also it bring, gives me more space, I suppose, later on for future stuff, I'm guessing. And then we'll just bring the cables along the bottom on the inside and then pop them up in this corner and over. So, so yeah, we'll bring the cables across in the bottom, pop them up, and then drop them in. I think that's going to be the way to do it. So we're going to be using this. Um, I'm not exactly sure. It might be Armeg. Perhaps might be an arm egg one. Um, so we're going to use that. Take it nice and steady. Uh, try and drill out in the bottom here straight away. Get that all sorted. Okay, so update time. So the board, I've had to take all the buzz bar off. Um, it's been a slight change of pan. So, ah, uh, do you know what? I'm just going to show you. Brought the armoured up and we've had to bring it across slightly. Because it just the 16 mil is just too tight to bring round. So, like I say, full disclaimer, I wanted it to bend from that point, but there's just no way of getting that armoured run round. So, I've now got my new RCBOs in. I've just dressed the cables in, got them in place. Um, I had to take the buzz bar off because there was no way of getting it round with a buzz bar in situ. I've redone all that. Talked all those back up because they're rated at 2.5 uh, newtons. So we've done all those. So that's fine. Now I've actually indicated all on here, obviously what the colours are, because obviously you, you must do that because obviously it's got black, so non-harmonised colours as such. So I've used the tape on there to tape that all the way through. Don't just use a tiny bit of tape because it tends to just come off. So we're now sorted and ready for a bit of testing, a uh, bit of testing procedure. So I'm starving. I'm going to go and have something to eat, but it's not going to make any difference to you because two seconds later, you'll be back and we're back on the testing where for me, oh, I am hungry. So I've managed to get it all sorted. Now you may have noticed at the bottom that I have not installed the banjo. Now, there's a good reason for that. So if you've watched the previous video, you'll know why. And I will explain why I've not put it on, um, but I've not put it on at this end. There's a little clue. Right, I'm gonna go get some lunch. I'll be back in two seconds. Rightio, so we are in the barn, obviously. Um, so we're now coming to do our dead testing. So we've linked out at the main DB, linked out, linked out the live and the earth. And now, so that basically we're measuring is the R1 plus R2 test, which we're going to make, get our highest resistance back here. So we need to get the cover off that. So kit you're going to need. So you're going to need an MFT. This is the Mega, it's MFT X1. Uh, so this is their latest one that they've got. I've always had Mega. I've never really gone away from the brand. So there's loads of different variations and versions that you can get, different manufacturers and stuff, not sponsored by them, one iota. Um, but that is just basically what we need. So with the MFT, you need to make sure that your leads are nulled. And that basically means you just take the resistance out of your cables. So to do that, you're going to get your clips like so, link them across, and that's given me a result. What's that? 0.1. So you clear that off, and obviously you should be back down to zero then. And that means you took the resistance out of the lead and you're getting the true measurement of the cable itself so next thing we need to do is to get the board cover off and we'll try and do that together but i don't know whether i'm going to be able to oh, i don't think i'm going to have to do this one-handed have a look a bit of sideways action on Ooh. this is stupid i'm not going to get it one-handed Come on, come on. Here we go, we got this. Yeah, we've done it one-handed. Never doubt myself, not for a second. So, what we now need to do, because we have got at the other end, we have linked out the live and the earth, we're now gonna measure between the two. We're not really gonna need to take them out of here because we've got clear connection here, clear connection there, so we're not gonna do that. So let's get the tester and get that sorted. Hold on. Okay, to make life a little bit easier, I'm going to use the crocodile clip. Get that on there. 
and then we're going to go across. So we've got a resistance there of 0 0.08, which is nice and low, which is what I expected anyway, purely because it's it's 16 mil. Um, so obviously that is my highest result. The good thing about the X1 is that it records the previous result, so obviously 0 0.07. We knew we saw it at 0 0.08, so that is what we're going to mark down on our really, really technical uh, test certificate. And yes, I did forget my iPad. Stop judging me. All right, don't judge me. 0 0.08. That is official. This is obviously going down to the uh, the customer, um, the issued test certificate. So insulation resistance test. So now I need to go to the other end of the board and disconnect the other end. Um, so... We're going to run through there, going to take the link out between the live and the earth so then we can carry out our insulation resistance test. Two seconds and I'm going to go and disconnect it. Okay, so with the other end disconnected, out of the RCBO and out of the MET because then you won't get any parallel paths or anything. I want to test this circuit only. So you'll hit your test button and you should ideally get 999 mega ohms. Now, if you get a slightly lower reading... The chances are it's because of moisture and things like that. But in fairness, that's what we're expecting, 999. So we now know that we're safe to energize the circuit and do the RCBO test. Now, some might say, why have I not put an RCBO on here? The reason why, because I've got my, my installation is going to be protected by RCD um, at, the, at the far end. So the entire installation is going to be protected. So from here, we're going to have um, multiple MCBs and then it's only got one point of problem in which is actually back at the main house so you could put change that for a different rcd so you can have twin rcd you don't technically need it because you've got a mechanical protection in the case of the armoring but i always like to cover the entire installation uh with rcd protection especially in a domestic property now the way round it is if you put a time delay RCD at one, either this end or the other end, you can then run two RCDs, but obviously it gets mega, mega expensive and you don't want to do that. Um, so yeah, so that's why I've done it this way. So some of you might be going, oh, you should have put an RCD on this end and that end. But that's why I do it, because I like to have the entire installation all covered. All right. So next course of action. Okay, so we've got RCD testing uh, and we've also got our ZS that we can do. So there's two ways of doing ZS, you can do measured ZS and you can also do calculated ZS. So the calculated ZS is your main ZE coming into the board plus your R1 plus R2 which will give you your calculated ZS. Now there's a lot to be said to doing a calculated ZS. Um, I prefer it myself um, because you're, you're less time in potential dangers. When I've spoke to my NIC assessors over the years, they always ask me which way do I do it. Uh, I've always said to them I prefer doing a measured ZE, and they said, yeah, that's what we prefer as well. Um, so let me know in your comments below whether that's what you always do. Um, I know it's slightly different if you're doing a EICR report, but if you're doing new installs, that's what I've always done, in fairness. So we're now going to do our RCD test. So one of the things we need to make sure on here that we are selecting the right RCD in your tester because obviously you've got, you know, is this uh, for an EV and what type it is, type AC, type A, you know, all these sorts of things. It just helps. 30 milliamps as well because what I've been caught out a few times on this tester is that for some reason it's decided that it wanted to test at 10 milliamps and obviously then because you're just so used to it set up at 30 milliamps it won't trip out um, and then you start to panic, oh god what's going on now but it actually has just changed itself for some reason so I'm going to get this test sorted with the RCD um, and we'll see what you've got. Okay RCD test done, so we've tested it at one times its current rating at 180 degrees and zero degrees and we've got 38.9 was my highest which is what we're going to record down and then we've got to do the functional test hold on don't forget and then i'll have to refer back to the video when i i mean i've got to make sure my official paperwork is all up to date and then we've got to do a functional test and the functional test is essentially on the rcbo you've got the test button you need to make sure once you energize it you smash the test button and it trips out all right that's all there is to it so essentially exactly the same job into the other uh, triple garages rather than the barn but that is basically the install in a nutshell how you go about testing it and it's all good so we just got to do a ZE and the PFC at source so we'll go and do those and we'll let you know what we've got 
Right, I've just done my ZE, right? So it's important, two things, is to make sure you disconnect any uh, outgoing like earth bonding, things like that, because you'll get what's known as a parallel path. Parallel path behind that, essentially, is that if you've got the earthing arrangement still attached to, say, your water and your gas, that will lower your result and give you a non, not a true reading. So you disconnect those, turn all the power off to the house, because obviously you're making all of a sudden the whole property have no earthing to it. So you turn it all off, disconnect your mains incoming earthing, which is 16 mil in this case, and cro crocodile clip onto there, live and neutral on the incomer, and then you'll get a result. And my result on here is 0 0.23, which is actually surprisingly quite a decent result, considering obviously the installation and obviously it's a, it's a working farm. So that's what I'm going to go in. My PFC is at one kiloamp. So we're going to write all those down. We've done our functional test now. So we've just got to repeat the whole process for the other board and then we're all done. We are all done. So before I forget, I better write them down because I genuinely got a memory like a gold, goldfish. And if I don't do it now, I'm, I'm going to be silly. Okay, so to calculate, so you'll basically get, so get your calculator out, come on, we'll do it all together. So get your calculator. So we had our ZE of 0.23, and then you add on your 0 0.08, which will give you 0 0.31. So that is my ZS, calculated ZS for that circuit. There you go. So come on, a bit of maths as well, from me, is a bit, a bit mad. Right, so hopefully you've enjoyed this, and if you have, make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. So, I just remembered that I said at the start of the video, I'll explain more when to do with what the future plans are within that job. So where the board is, eventually there's going to be a staircase, because directly above it, you may have noticed, it looks a little bit just like old wooden planks. But above there, there's actually a secret room. So that secret room is going to be converted into one hell of an office. And with that, the utility is going to be done. The downstairs toilet is going to be done, relocated, reshifted round. And it's going to be absolutely epic. And I mean epic. And I forgot that I was going to be telling you. I promised it at the start, didn't I? I promised you and I felt a little bit like I'd let you down. And uh, I just remembered. So, also, in the barn, in the barn at the far end, the really jazzy one with all the beans, that one is going to eventually, hopefully, be a dwelling. Um, but in the interim, she's going to be one hell of a gym. So there you go. Exclusive. And I held my word. I did all my testing on the other board, because I know it's some of you people... Hey, Bobby didn't even test that other board. Well, guess what I did? Do you want to know where they are? So... Here we go. Strap yourself in, girls and boys. We've got R1 plus R2 is 0.08. On, obviously, on my, my ticket of dreams. Uh, my insulation resistance was, let me guess, 999. And my RCBO tripping out times were, were? Was 39 milliseconds, which we are well in. All right. So, there you go. Hold on to my word. Test certificate's done. My test certificate, well, it's not done. But you know what I'm saying. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for clicking on. Hope you subscribe. See you on the next one.